What's up guys? I have got a three-parter videos coming your way of how to get the most out of a lat pullover variation. In this case, we're doing the rope cable lat pullover. That's a lot. I got it out. I'm going to pretend that was my first time doing that. Uh, but anyway, this is going to be a three-parter. The first one is basically going to be just going over setup, what the purpose of this exercise is. Part two will be actually going through execution. So once you're in the good position, how do you actually move to get the most out of it from your lats? And part three, I'll go into some more advanced tips. And the advanced tips will be kind of explaining some of the things. I won't go into too much detail now because I'm going to explain body position, range of motion, trying to bias certain parts or certain muscles and not others. And again, I'll clarify some of that nerd stuff in part three if you're interested. Otherwise, you can just stick around for part one and two, and you should have a pretty good idea of how to set these up and get the most out of them in the gym. So first and foremost, for most lat stuff, and again, I'll go into more detail if you're going to be like, why? Um, but for most lat stuff, this is your money arm path. So again, if you just have your arms kind of hanging at your side, where you can have your upper arm moving comfortably at your side because your lat can pull your upper arm back here, this is a great width for pretty much all things lats. So whether you're doing a row or you're doing a pull down, you pretty much want everything staying in this width. So a lot of the form tips are going to be showing how do we stay in this width that will explain some of the handle things so some of the advantages of this exercise as far as the handle and all those things go first and foremost it's one of the few lat exercises that can actually train your lats through pretty much their full contractile range with one exercise and it can also do it with what i consider appropriate load challenge and i use it what does that mean i said okay well you could do a dumbbell fly it can take your pecs through pretty much their full range of motion but everyone knows basically once you get to this stacked point on a dumbbell and actually bring them across your body, there's no challenge to the pec and actually this, they're starting to actually bring them across the load of the weight actually brings them across your body there. So while I could say, hey, a dumbbell fly trains your pecs to the full range of motion, there's gonna be parts of it where there's not an appropriate load challenge. The beauty of a pullover is it trains the lats to the full range of motion with appropriate load challenge. And there's a little added benefit of set up properly. It will take your elbows out of the equation a little bit. So a lot of people, when they're doing ro uh, rowing stuff, when they're doing pull down stuff, because the elbow is flexing, a lot of people have a hard time keeping elbow flexors, biceps, forearm stuff out of it. So this can be a great one. One, very efficient for the range of motion involved, but two, also a great way to potentially keep the elbows out of it. So as far as setup goes, the first thing we're going to go into is going to be handles. So someone's going to say, you know, why wouldn't I use this straight bar handle thing? Well, two reasons. One, whenever you're moving at this type of arm path, a neutral grip is always going to present the best hand position to not have your elbows go somewhere you want. Because as soon as you tend to go into a pronated grip, hopefully you can see what happened there. I can almost do it without doing it, but if I go fully pronated, most people elbows start to flare. And so again, if you're doing any type of pull down variation, I almost always see people grabbing the little, either whether it's a V bar even or a straight bar, and they're doing it with this position with their elbows flared out. As soon as your elbows flare out, you may be putting your body in a position for some other muscles to do the majority of the work. The other thing with that as well too, is with that bar, it's near impossible to get your arms all the way at your side because basically the bar literally runs into your body. So if I have a rope, I can actually get my arms further back, continue to fully shorten the lat. So one, if you have a single rope, for a lot of people, this can do the job of one, getting you in a good stretch position at the top. And two, depending on how wide you are, can do a pretty darn good job of getting your arms at the side. Now, the wider you are, generally the longer ropes you're gonna need to get them fully at your side without that rope really starting to kind of pull you across your body. So if you're very, very wide, you can always do the two rope method, but for the vast majority of human beings, one rope's gonna do a pretty darn good job of again, getting you in a pretty good position at the top and then also allowing you to get near fully shortened lat at the bottom. Now, as far as setup and body position goes, this is the one that I'll get into a little bit more detail. Why? Um, but for the most part, if you were going to choose one position, now there's going to be arguments for doing different positions for different goals, but if you're going to choose one position, for the most part, I say you're going to be have that body position leaned forward a little bit and pretty close to under the machine. So this is about where I would be. So your end stretch range of motion will be here. You ideally want to keep it just before it bottoms out. So I'm bottoming out here. You can back up just a little bit so the stack isn't bottoming out, leaning forward just a little bit. And then from here, everything is just about keeping your body nice and still. So you should have a nice solid base of support here, pelvis nice and still, neutral spine. And if anything, you want to err slightly on the side of a little bit of a flex spine. So the thing you want to avoid is extended chest up as you're rowing. 
you want to, or excuse me, as you're doing a pull down, you'd rather be, if anything, nice and neutral, which can be a slight arch in the lower back is fine, or anything, even almost a slight crunch. So you have a flat lower back or even ever so slightly round. And I say there's reasons to mess around with that. So this is the setup position close to the actual cable, as close as you can get without it bottoming out. Lean forward just a little bit. And this is where we're going to start to go into part two and talk about execution. So just a brief recap, rope pullovers, great exercise to train the lats to their near full contractile range. The rope allows you to get through a nice stretch position and to a near fully stretch or fully shortened position as well too. Um, can tend to also be a great option to keep the elbows out of it. As far as setup goes, relatively close to the cable stack, forward lean body position, keep that spine neutral or slightly flexed, and then basically locked in stone from there. And then again, in execution, I'll talk about what you want your arms doing and everything else doing and some different variations once we go into part three, as far as why would you maybe want to be further back, further forward, more upright or more bent over. So if you found any of that helpful, please do the YouTube thing, like, subscribe, share with some people and stick around, come back for part two, where I'll go into how do you actually perform this exercise to get the most out of your lats.